We are going to dissect the damaging coastal storm for the Carolinas and Mid-Atlantic this weekend. Could be a name storm as well. We'll get into it. First of all, I want to show you the area that we're looking at the possibility of development here. This is what we're concerned about. We've had a high risk here over the last couple of days. There's no doubt there's going to be a storm that forms off the Florida coast and it comes northward. Will it gain tropical characteristics? That's the question. Let me show you why this is going to be a little tricky and why this isn't going to be purely a tropical system. I want to show you what's happening here. The energy that forms this storm isn't going to come from the tropics. It's coming from the United States here. A little complex setup. Let's take you to the upper air pattern here as we move, move forward here. Here's what's going to happen. Let's go through the day. See this little piece of energy? Right in here. This is going to come across the southeast as we head toward tomorrow. There it goes. And then I'm going to stop this on Friday. All right, here's the setup. This is what's going to be the storm here. And then this is going to be steering this storm, right? And it's going to steer it up the coast. Let me go to Saturday morning. Here's where we have this getting now off the coast. Here's the energy. You see the yellow, oranges, and red? That's the energy. This upper low, the reds here across the lakes, that's what's going to capture this and pull it northward. Watch it all play together as we get into Sunday and Monday. You see that? Watch how this low dives south, pulls this energy northward, and that's what's going to bring the rain and the wind right up the mid-Atlantic and in toward the southeast as well. You see that? Now, notice that the energy is coming not from the tropics, but from the United States. So this initially has the feel of a winter storm or even a nor'easter. Look at the energy. But once this energy gets offshore, if it could stay in this area for about two to three days, you can slowly turn this system from uh, what would be a more of a winter storm to start gaining some tropical characteristics. Watch the energy. So it gets offshore here Saturday evening. Sunday, it's right in here. So now you're 24 hours, right, into this zone. And then, as we head into Monday, it kind of gets out of this area and off the mid-Atlantic. So why am I focusing on this area, saying that this system would have to be over this area for, let's say, 48 to 72 hours to gain tropical characteristics? It's because the warm waters, you see? The, warm, the waters in this area are around that 80-degree threshold right in here. So if you can get this storm to sit into this area for about two to three days, right, you can take a cold core system or a winter storm and start gathering some tropical characteristics because of the warm water. You're going to start getting showers and thunderstorms to go off. That heats the atmosphere because of the release of latent heat. And that's how you can slowly, surely, to surely make this more of a tropical system. It doesn't appear to me like you have enough time to do that. We'll see the National Hurricane Center will make the call whether they give this a subtropical storm or just keep it a regular cold core storm and then it won't have a name. What is a subtropical storm? You see this a lot early and late in the year when you get the interaction between the jet stream and the tropics. It is a storm that has both winter storm characteristics and tropical storm characteristics here. We call it a hybrid. It's a subtropical storm. It's a close call. We'll see. But regardless... Boy, you're going to have some impacts with this as we move forward here because what's going to end up happening here, and let me, so you could see this here, right in here. There it is. That's the definition. Now, moving forward, I want to talk about the impacts for this system here because it will have the look and feel of a uh, tropical system with the rain and the wind that we're going to see here. I want to show you the impacts of of this system moving forward here. All right, what I have here is these are the wind gusts associated with this system here. All right, let me put you into double box here. So as we go forward, here comes our storm. I'm going to mark it. See, it's right here. Here it is. It's right here. The time frame we're looking at here is Saturday morning. So here's the low pressure system. Watch how the winds start to increase moving forward here along the North Carolina coast. So this is Saturday night. Look at the winds here. Here's your area of low pressure. Look at the winds along the Carolina coast. You're starting to bring them in out of the east northeast. These wind gusts are shown right in here. You're up over 40 miles per hour. That's Saturday evening.
Now, notice what happens on Sunday. Let's go to Sunday afternoon and evening here. The storm starts moving in here off the Carolina coast. You still have some gusty winds here, probably in the 30 to 40 range. But note the mid-Atlantic coast here. The Delmarva Peninsula, Jersey Show. Sure, th this is showing wind gusts in here of up over 40 to 50 miles per hour gusts right? And then moving forward in the Monday, you still have this storm lingering off the Delmarva Peninsula right here. Look at these. These are wind gusts offshore near 70 miles per hour. Now, that's offshore, not on the coast. But you could see the concern we have in these areas as we move into the Friday and the upcoming weekend. With this storm taking this track, you're going to have a damaging system here. Unfortunately, you're going to have damaging wind gusts as well with that. In fact, take a look at the seas too, moving forward here. Wow, look at these seas starting to build. You're looking at seas up over 20 feet, battering the coast. Subtropical or nor'easter, doesn't matter. It's a damaging storm this weekend.